through life, our paths are crossing paths with other people. From our parents to our children, from our brothers and sisters to our marriage partners. According to karmic teachings, we always meet the same souls, only under different masks and different roles. The soul goes through this cycle of physical incarnation because it has some kind of debt or obligation, that is, is not entirely free. Through interaction with others we are given the opportunity to free ourselves from the shackles of karma. Karma is nothing but the result of the acts we did from the lack of love and lack of connection to its source. Due to lack of love, we are consciously or unconsciously hurting others, or they are hurting us. Now we are in this karma bank to resolve any residual loans, all by the law which is the same for everybody. Karmic records are stored in Akasha, the memory of the universe, that are not available to our conscious mind. But we can learn the lessons from our merging through the feelings and emotions that others provoke in us. If a person fulfills its goal, they move away from our lives. Some people make us feel unpleasant when we are near them, so it is a bit of a relief to be liberated from them. However, we shouldn't ignore these emotions and their presence in us. The origin of them is within us. The mud and the dirt of our suppressed negative experiences and unwanted emotional states of fear and pain are in the depths of our being. All people that we meet through life are our teachers, whose role is to help us to release from the poisons we are holding on to. The first contact with a person takes place on a visual level, but usually the attraction comes from another subconscious level, where there is a reading of subconscious karmic records. Our karmic record and the karmic record from the other person recognize the essential thing for clearing our karma and so it comes to connection or entering in a relationship. In a relationship, we are not growing by expressing our best features, which are not the real us, but by having conflicts. The moments of conflict are worth gold, because important things are happening. When we have our first moment of jealousy, we should ask ourselves, why do I have this feeling? What is this within me? Don't ignore this feeling. It is necessary to work on it, to put this wandering fragment that is not integrated and which seeks its place in the mosaic. These fragments are the weaknesses of our personality. Maybe, we have been outcasted in our childhood, and that rejection in our crucial period of our lives made us a magnet for these kind of emotions. So in time, our personality polarizes and disintegrates a particular emotional experience such as fear, pain, hate, jealousy, and so on, until one part of us continues to function stably. We force our idea of stability in the relations with others, but if the behavior of the partner is out of that idea, and if we are not able to understand some of their moves, we are switching to fragments of fear, from where our mind draws its beliefs. Actually. Our partner only plays its role in creating the mosaic of our personality. But we cannot understand that because we see our partner as someone who is trying to hurt us. There is a karmic thing in experiencing these emotions. We are building a relationship with a person who in one distant past, had the same feelings for us. The idea of karma is not for you to suffer, but to unite you both to unconditional love and spiritual integrity. Learn how to act out of love, because I am a partner and a partner is I. They are the ripped piece of us and we all are ripped pieces of this big puzzle. I am both, the drop, me, and the ocean, all the people, because there is ocean in every little drop. And as long as the relationships are not crystallized at this level, people will continue the cycle of incarnation in different lives and different roles.